how to wire to video. How to make your own. How to make your own hard top part. How to change the oil. How to fix tail light problems. How to install. How to do a complete tune-up. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, today I'm going to teach you about diodes. Picture this little rig that I made here as your vehicle, your car, your truck, your Jeep, whatever you know you happen to be using, your SUV, doesn't matter, whatever your vehicle is. And you have three separate sets of lights. Say you have a set of lights uh, on your bumper, a set of lights, you know, on your, uh, up by your windshield or your outer bumper or on the hood or something. And then you have a set on your roof or something else. Just say you have three sets of lights that are all facing the front or they could be facing the rear, it doesn't matter. You know, you turn them on one by one. Or you can turn all of them on at once, but you have to flip all of the switches on. Say there came a time that you just wanted to flash all of your lights all at once without having to, you know, use your whole hand or something to try to turn on all. See, and I still couldn't get it there, trying to turn on all of your switches. What if you just had a push button or another switch that would turn all of them on? All at once. I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, I'm going to show you this little rig that I put together. Um, it's actually got three relays down here on the bottom, three switches and a push button switch, and some little LEDs. Got it all wired up, going from the switches down to the relays, from the relays back up to the LEDs. And I've got it all wired in to share one power wire and one ground wire. If you were to just actually run another power wire from this push button, tap it in here, then tap it in here, then tap it in here. When you push the push button, all of the lights would come on. But when you would use one of your switches, they would also be connected. So when you switch one of the switches, all of the lights would come on. I've had a lot of comments and people emailing me and asking, you know, you know, how can I turn all of my lights on with one switch and still have switches to turn them on individually? And that's where this little bitty diode comes in. This is a diode. When you think of a diode, basically think of a one-way street, so to say, or a one-way valve. Um, this type of diode, um, a lot of people call them a blocker diode, it will only allow current to flow one direction which will be towards this little silver band right here. Current will only flow that direction. If you flip it around, current will not go that way now. It will only flow towards the silver band. I got these on Amazon. They come in like a bag of 25 for less than six bucks. What we're going to do with the diodes is we're going to tap into our trigger wire or also known as a coil wire, basically the wire that's going to your relay to activate the relay. I've always called them trigger wires or coil wires. Um, you may call them something different, but like I said, it's just the wire that goes from your switch to the relay to turn on the relay. We're actually going to tap in to each of these wires with a diode. Each one will have a diode that once all three are tapped in, we'll join them together to a wire and put on the other end of this push button. And what that'll do is only allow current to come from the push button into this wire and it'll go down and activate the relay. But it won't allow power when you flip the switch, it won't allow power to flow from switch to switch. Here's what we're gonna be using. We're going to be using a T-tap, a connector, and our diode. This is how we're going to tap in to each of our trigger wires. If you don't know how a T-tap works, it's got that little piece of metal with a slit in it, and you actually wrap it around the wire, and you clamp it shut. If I can get this to focus here, and you clamp it shut, and it'll actually splice the insulation. They come in different sizes. They come the, the red, blue, and yellow, like your butt connectors and all your other connectors. 
So make sure you have the right size for the right wire. Once you actually have the T-tap in place, we're going to use our little terminal here, and we're going to solder in the diode. We're going to do that for each of the coil wires, which we have a blue one for the blue lights, an orange one for the red. I didn't want to use red to you know, confuse everybody with the power wire, and a green for the green lights. You don't have to use T-taps. You could actually just strip back some insulation if you wanted and solder a diode in there. But you, after you put the diode in, you're going to want to insulate the leads of the diode somehow. So that way you don't get any shorts or anything. But this is basically to show you if you already have you know, all of your switches in place in your dash, this would be the easiest way to do without you know, rewiring everything just using T-taps to tap into your existing wire. Okay, I've got our end, our diode, and our wire all soldered together. Excuse my horrible soldering. My soldering iron kind of took a crap, so I actually had to do it with a little propane torch. So hopefully I didn't overheat everything and burn up the diodes. Okay, here is our wire. Each of these have a diode inside of them. And we joined all three of them together and then put an end on this. All of these wires are a little too long, but it's just easier to work with them that way. So now I'm going to show you how to use the T-tap on our little rig, and then we'll plug in our wiring. Okay, here we are on the back of our makeshift dash panel. Just pretend that this is your switch panel that you have inside of your car. We're going to take our T-tap, and remember that our blue wire, our orange wire, and our green wire are the coil wires for the relays. So we're going to take the T-tap with this little metal slit, and we're actually going to wrap it around the wire, getting that slit lined up on the wire. And then you'll want to take a pair of pliers and squeeze until it clicks. When it clicks, it's locked together, and sometimes you want to twist it around a little bit, and it should be spliced into that wire. And then you can take your connector, and plug in to your T-tap. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the next two wires. plug in our remaining wires. Now that we've got the three of those joined together and we have the silver line of the diode closest to the wire so power can only flow this direction. Because if you notice these are all connected together now so that would make all three of these coil wires connected. So when you would turn on one switch it would power all three. Well, since we have the diodes, power can't go this direction. It can only go this direction. So we're going to take the other end of our wire that we put a small terminal on, and we're going to go over to our push button. Our push button already has power on one side, and this will be the out. This is what they call an NO push button switch, or a normally open or normally off. There we go. Now, if we've done everything correctly, we should still be able to do individual lights. So we have our blue. We have our red. And we have our green. We can have all of them on with all of the switches. And now, we should be able to take our push button and it'll turn on all three. Now it is worth saying that these diodes, 
get to focus on them here. Like I said, I got a pack of 25 of them on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description to these. These can only handle one amp. Now, if you wanted to, you know, use these in some other form or fashion uh, that is, you know, hooked directly to your light or something like that, that pulls, say, you know, five or 10 amps, you can get these diodes that can go up to, I believe, 20 amps. Um, they're a little bit larger, a little bit more expensive, but you can get them. But your best bet, you know, if, if you want to be able to flash all of your lights at once, just do it off of your coil slash trigger wire because it's very, very low amp draw and it won't hurt these little tiny diodes. Hopefully this video has helped you out if this is something that you're looking to do. Like I said, I've had a few people ask, uh, you know, how to do pretty much the same exact, this, you know, this exact thing here. Well, that's pretty much how you do it. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to go into my channel and actually check out some of my other stuff. I have all kinds of different videos, you know, other than, you know, wiring, stuff like this. I have videos about Jeeps and weather and guns and a little bit of everything. So if you find a video that you like, you know, hit the like button. If you have something to say, leave it down in the comments. And if you happen to find more than one video that you like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This is just some behind the scenes stuff for uh, people that are new to my channel or if uh, this is the first video you've seen of mine. It's a little tiny tripod that I had this camera sat on so it would be low enough to see the little rig there. Um, I think I showed this at the beginning of the video. That's my makeshift battery, which actually has ran over to the battery on Project Renegade, which is a 2005 Jeep Liberty because I didn't have a battery laying around. And the battery charger that I have happens to be one of those smart chargers that won't produce any current unless it's actually hooked to a battery. Um, all of my bins and stuff that have all the electrical stuff and bolts and stuff like that. And the lighting that I use for the video. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that uh, you find a couple videos of mine that you like, and I hope you subscribe to my channel.